I've spent some time playing with generative AI to see where it can help entrepreneurs, product developers, and creatives really gain an advantage. And is it even worth your time right now? So starting with design, I took on the task of adding AI to the branding workflow. I've compiled some shortcuts and hacks for anyone looking to accelerate logo creation. And I'll also give my opinion on the value of AI in the logo design process. So let's get stuck in. From my experimentation out of the three popular models, DALI 2, Stable Diffusion and Midjourney, Midjourney has the most stylistic and illustrative style, so it's best suited to logo design. The concepts it produces are very illustrative and detail rich, so not suited to every brand. However, very suited to sports teams, gaming and some other stylized areas we're going to take a look at. To get started, you need to sign up to Discord. If so when you first log into Midjourney, you're going to be asked to accept the terms and services. So next you'll want to pick one of the newbie rooms and you'll see here, this is a group room where everybody's putting in different streams and prompts. Okay, so once we're in, we want to scroll down to the bottom of Discord, type imagine and whatever our prompt is, cartoon. Okay, so scrolling down, we can find our output here, which is Pokemon Go meets The Last of Us, which is pretty cool to be honest. Okay, so the next thing you can do is choose if you want to upscale any one of these in particular, or if you want to see further variations. So we're going to decide to um, upscale version one. If you want to have the Mid Journey bot to yourself, the trial will allow you a certain amount of images, but you can sign up to, the pa to a package yourself. I recommend the middle tier. It gives you the most flexibility. It's about $30 a month. Then when you're in the Mid Journey bot, you can actually message it directly and it'll be part of your direct messages. If you've experimented, you'll realize that the outputs from Midjourney are very detail rich and they're filled with multiple colors, backgrounds and gradients. A good logo mark, however, is best kept simple. It needs to be recognizable from multiple distances and sizes and reproducible on packaging, print and web. So this generally means keeping it to one to three colors uh, maximum. So what kind of prompts can we use to simplify the output? Okay, so the most basic prompt we can go with is a logo. So imagine a logo for a X brand, in this case, soft drink brand. And these are the kind of outputs that you come out with. Now this is really cool here down in quadrant four, <laughs> really like it. But again, this isn't as simple as we'd wanted and not really reproducible across multiple different mediums. So how do we start to refine this to what we want? So I took the fourth image from that last quadrant. So basically I upscaled it and then I copied the image source. And then if you type in slash imagine, paste in the image source directly from Discord and then say on white background, 2D simple vector and then add in this no uh, tag, no realistic details or shadows. Now we start to get something a little bit more simple, more 2D and more minimal. So these are the kind of things that will more easily be reproduced in print. So the keywords here are on white background, 2D, simple and vector are quite useful. So let's think about the different types of logos you might want to produce. And this influences what kind of keywords we can use. So I borrowed this here from um, a Wix article, also really good, look up five types of logos from the Type Ed website. But here we've got word mark, letter mark, letter forms, abstract, combos, etc. You can use these kind of keywords to prompt Midjourney to give you the type of logos that you're looking for. So let's look at a few examples. So we have a local soccer team that uses red and blue colors. So imagine a mascot or a soccer team using a falcon, soccer ball, red and blue. Now again, these are really pretty cool, but there's a lot of uh, um, shading going on here, a lot of gradients. Again, not the easiest to reproduce. So can we refine that a little bit further? Using instead uh, the prompt of emblem for a soccer team, simple, minimal, red, blue, falcon, no shading or detail, we get something that's much more reproducible, particularly like number four here. Now you'll all also notice that Midjourney, as I mentioned, doesn't do text. So what we'll need to do is pull this into Illustrator or Canva or some other tool like Inkscape to actually uh, cut out this and replace with more legible text with a font of our choice. 
So I thought this one was pretty cool. I'm working on an app at the moment called Promise. It's a habit sharing app. So let's imagine a logo for a habit sharing app called Promise, mountain, sun. Let's make it abstract, uh, again, on a white background. And here's some cool ideas that it produced. So taking that mountain and sun idea a little bit further, um, you can also prompt it to create iOS icons. And these tend to be a little bit more simple. So you can use the prompt iOS app icon, simple, minimal, gradient style, um, vector. And then again, no realistic details. Here's an example of a symbol logo type using a falcon. Imagine a flat vector logo, falcon, minimal, no realistic details. Here's another fun style to play with, Japanese style. I found some really good outputs from these. The style is quite simple, so it's good for logo design. Um, and you can use extra keywords like use only three colors and of course no realistic shading and you get these kind of outputs which I thought were pretty cool. Using the black and white prompts gives you some really simple outputs and these can be really good when you're putting them in to Illustrator or Inkscape in order to vectorize them which is important for when you want to output for print and other media for scaling up and down as SVGs. Imagine a mascot for a car wash in the style of pop art. Uh, no details. Here's another fun style to try out psychedelic. See what you can get with this kind of an input. So this one is pretty cool and also pretty controversial at the same time. You can in input the name of a famous artist or logo designer and use their style to prompt some examples that you might want to use. Particularly like this one here at the top and we're going to use that to create um, an example logo. Okay, so now I've got my image, I want to drop it into Illustrator. So I simply copy the image from uh, Discord and dropped it straight into uh, an Illustrator file. So next thing you want to do is go and image trace this, or it used to be called live trace. So what that means is we're going to isolate all these different color values here and turn it into a vector graphic. And a vector graphic is more commonly what you'd want to use in print or as a logo. Uh, it's just a cleaner way of outputting and a better way of represent, representing in print. So right now we're gonna go over here to properties. You might see this along the top here either, um, but on my setup it's here in properties and we go down here to image trace. So let's hit that. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick six colors. So let's look at the settings box by clicking this here. In the view, we want to look at outlines. We want to keep this as simple as possible. So six colors might not have been what we wanted. Let's drop it down to three. Okay, so that's a whole lot cleaner. And if we're looking at the lines here, it's pretty tidy in terms of what we want try and play around with the settings here to see if you can get the optimal output that you want but generally the most powerful ones are the number of colors that you apply and again make sure to look at the outlines to see that they're pretty clean so, so i'm going to go over here and hit expand so that's going to actually process everything and give me the vectors that i want okay so let's add in our text go to the text tool this isn't really representative of the text we had before, so let's go to window type character. And I've selected this one before because it kind of matches the style that I'm looking for. So let's pick this and let's match the color to our piglet. Perfect. Cool. So there's our brand new logo. What do you think? So in conclusion, I think it's time to start playing with Midjourney. If you're a logo designer and a creative, it can help with the inspiration you need for the creative process. But it's still too much to expect a lay person, entrepreneur or business person with little design skill to arrive at a usable brand. There are still too many other skills in the brand process that are still not automated. If you have more basic skills and are on a budget, I take a look at sites like Brandmark and Luka who use some basic AI and categorization to get you to a usable logo pretty quickly and with brand ready assets. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think it's fair to use other artists as prompt inspiration? And how far away are we from the whole process being automated? 